What's going on, everybody? Everyone hates Tesla. Today, we're going to be looking at SpaceX. I was going to get caught up into this pay package, but I already did one review, so I'm going to leave it alone. I'll probably circle back around at the end, but let's get into this actual video. This is how SpaceX builds starships. Guys, I recently was watching just an interview with a couple of guys that I love on Dumb Money, and they were having a conversation about, you know, EVs, FSD, and Optimus robot. But again, I've always been pointing out to you guys that the IP of Tesla is its manufacturing. And this is going to show in SpaceX. It even translate and transfers into building out rockets. It's ridiculous. If you actually see what it looks like, I'll show it towards the end. So stay tuned for that. But I'm going to allow this guy to explain some things about what's going on at Boca China. <laughs> Not Boca Mocha China, but Boca China, Texas, the dirty South. Texas, the birthplace of every starship. Here at the Starbase, SpaceX is building and testing its fleet of gigantic rocket prototypes. Their goal? Make a reusable vehicle that will allow humanity to reach and inhabit other worlds. Each ship starts as one stainless steel ring. Although not as light as aluminum or carbon fiber, stainless steel offers other advantages. It was chosen for Starship's primary build material because of its strength and temperature tolerance, which is crucial for achieving full reusability, since a fully reusable spacecraft needs to go through large temperature fluctuations on its way to orbit and back. Rings 9 meters in diameter and about 1.8 meters high are stacked and welded together to build the rocket's hull. Stainless steel is also much cheaper and easier to work with than carbon fiber. This is very important because SpaceX aims to achieve serial production and build hundreds of these ships. Now, watch this. This is serial production. So also when we look at Optimus Robot, maybe it could do something with the rockets, but let's stay focused, right? When we look at Boston Dynamics, when we look at figure one, I'm always asking the question, do they have the ability to manufacture and I'm talking about mass scale and not only just mass scale and mass production, but I'm talking about doing it good. Listen, Ford GM have producing, have been producing cars for a very long time. They haven't been good at it. Like Tesla, we have the highest profit margin. Why? Because our process, people, product and process, the process is on point. All right. And specifically, our people focus on improving the process. The best step is no step. This is what Elon makes as a statement. Now, that's not many manufacturers, let alone car, man, car manufacturers. Now that we have this, we still transfer this type of culture onto SpaceX and SpaceX does the same things. I mean, guys, there's not many people, Boeing, General Dynamics, Raytheon, that actually have rocket factories, right? Assembly line and building out hundreds of rockets in their future. We're producing rockets faster than the actual government is able to finish the paperwork for it. These four rings are part of the skirt section. This is where the aft delt and thrust puck are located. We'll return to see how the engines are installed there later. Stringers are added to support the massive weight and increase the structural integrity of the rocket. Rings stacked above form a liquid oxygen pressurized tank. Starship will use liquid oxygen and liquid methane for propellant. The common dome separates the liquid oxygen tank from the liquid methane tank above. The methane header tank is connected to the thrust puck with the downcomer, a pipe that supplies the engine with fuel. Liquid methane was chosen because of its many advantages. It's cheaper, easier to produce, has higher performance than other fuels, and can be made on Mars, allowing us to refill and relaunch spacecraft from the surface of the red planet. So it's not only being built to be manufactured in a large amounts, but it's also being built in a way that it could be repaired and utilized on the red planet. And that's Mars for you guys who don't know. So again, look at this. This is fascinating. The guys, this is complex. This is not nothing simple, okay? So every time I hear people say, well, you know, Elon, he's a buster. It's like, you got to go down to Boca China 
that actually know what you're talking about. And the people that work there, it's not like these people were together making this happen prior to Elon Musk because they weren't, right? This was just a place where people went to the beach, all right? And we weren't at the top of rocket technology. We didn't make our own engines. We went to Russia, all right? So NASA, Raytheon, Boeing, and all of them went to Russia. But now we have our own. And this is a good thing, guys. This is the IP, the intellectual property. This is the ability of Elon Musk to put these people together. So when you're calling people fanboys, you're failing to realize that, <laughs> look at this. Look at the Raptor. I'm going to shut up so you can hear something about the Raptor. Like, this is ridiculous. Translate this into Tesla and translate this into Neuralink. But let alone, let's focus here. Full flow staged combustion engines. The ship will utilize the sea level variant and vacuum optimized variant with the nozzle specialized for firing in space. Three gimbalable and throttleable sea level raptors are installed in the inner ring, and three fixed vacuum raptors make the outer ring of the engines. Also here, we can find a hydraulic power unit and some more COPVs. On the hull of the ship, we can see data and power cables and pipes used for autogenous pressurization. Flight termination system is installed in case the rocket loses control and needs to be blown up safely. Motor controlled forward flaps are installed on the nose of the rocket and they, together with the bigger aft flaps on the bottom of the ship, provide the aerodynamic surfaces necessary for the atmospheric re-entry and belly flop maneuver. During that- Guys, <laughs> oh my gosh. What is it about this that you are not loving? Like, and you can see the tents in the back, right? So don't worry about the tents in the back. I mean, that's currently how it was being built out. So those were the initial builds on the actual site. But now that we look forward, we're building a new facility right now. And I say we, because you know, I'm, I'm part of SpaceX all day, every day, but we're building out a new facility and that facility, it would be more of a solid, you know, factory and a facility that would be more functional. But at the beginning, Elon had these tents because it was just very quick to deploy. But now that we've, you know, been able to send a couple of more than a couple, but a lot of rockets up, right? Uh, we're building out the actual permanent facility that's going to be built out better. And the same thing for the factory in Fremont. The Fremont factory will never be as good as the one in Shanghai because Shanghai was specifically built out around being, I guess you could say, in conjunction with the manufacturing process versus the one in Fremont was bought by Toyota and Toyota did not have the build out to be as let's say effective and efficient as Tesla builds out their facilities. And so the Giga Texas, that's way better. And so net net across the board, this facility and factory that, that we're going to be building on the Starbase would be more effective and efficient for building out these rockets than the tents that you see in the background right now. That atmospheric reentry, the ship will require a thermal shield to survive extreme temperatures of up to 1,700 degrees Kelvin or about 1,400 degrees Celsius. For that purpose, SpaceX will use shielding made out of many hexagonal ceramic tiles. Covering the spacecraft's windward side, thermal tiles are placed on mounting points with a ceramic insulation padding placed in between them and the ship's steel body. With most of the tiles being identical, they are aimed to be easily replaceable, allowing for Starship to be rapidly reusable and easily serviceable. When fully assembled, 50 meters high, Starship makes a truly extraordinary sight, reminiscent of old science fiction rocket designs from the 50s. SpaceX has taken the approach of rapid testing and innovation, and the design is being questioned, changed, and optimized constantly. According to current plans, we will soon see the first orbital launch, where many of the ship's systems and parts will be put to the test for the first time. Now, one of the things that people don't often get is when they see these launches and they happen, they're like, oh my gosh, it crashed. Oh my God, that's a failure. None of this stuff is a failure. It's called the scientific method. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but 
it's trial and error, right? And we revise as we go. Like, so the further we get each time, though you're thinking, oh, if it doesn't land, it's a failure. Like, no, each phase has been very good. And that's more so true in Starship in itself. Each launch has taught the team more about what they need to do and how they need to get it done. So this is a part of the process, failure, okay? I know you normies, just, you know, y'all go to school and all y'all know is if you don't pass, you fail. Well, in the real world and especially in entrepreneurship and science, right? The scientific experimentation, it's about failing and then it's about, hey, okay, how do we readjust? How do we learn from our failures and then improve? And that's what is happening currently with Starship. Now we have another launch coming up. The last one, Trump was there. So shout outs to Trump. And it's good just to have the administration there. The last administration that was possibly there uh, that I could think of was Trump. And then before Trump on the left side, shout outs to the Democrats, it was Obama. And Obama really changed the game by giving SpaceX this opportunity. So much respects to Obama for that, for at least space exploration. And then also, like I said, pushing that forward in this new contract that Elon Musk has. And I'm not even gonna dive into how SpaceX saves the government money in comparison to all the other, uh, you could say aerospace industry giants, but net net across the board, they save us massive amounts of money when it comes down to space exploration. We have the best technology hands down. No one can do this besides us. And it's all Elon Musk and the team at SpaceX. And again, guys, this all transfers to Tesla too. So I'm super excited about the future and what we got planned for the future. But as you see, you never seen technology ever before like this. New suits, new everything, new rockets, new suits, new landing. We're going to space. And without people like Elon Musk, this would not be possible. So much respect, but Elon for the win. You have to put some respect on his name. I know you guys don't want to. I know it doesn't make you happy to do that. But regardless, let's not focus on what's going on in the daily news, on the daily week, and nonsense like this. We're going to focus on the asset. We're going to focus on the company. We're going to focus on the fundamentals because everybody else loves to hate Tesla. Shout outs to Starlink, SpaceX, Elon. Shout outs to the Cybertruck and everybody else who is what most people call a fanboy. You damn sure I'm a fan of innovation. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you get this hot electricity, or should I say rocket?